Hi everyone, I just got my hands on the Kaiweets KM201 and I thought I'd do a quick little unboxing and first impressions video and maybe a teardown if there's some time. Um, I've used Kaiweets a little bit in the past. They've, they've been making some pretty decent multimeters at very low prices. Last time I had my hands on one it was uh, this model, the ST120, which I kind of like because it's useful if you only have two hands and you're climbing around trying to diagnose something because one of the probes is built into the body of the multimeter itself. And that's not the case with this one, although it does have probe holders on the back, so I'm not sure if maybe you can attach one of the probes in a deployed position, but let's open it up and find out. So inside the box we have the usual user manual. The multimeter itself and the probes are not detachable these are hardwired probes and the wires seem a little thin compared to, to other probes that I'm used to using even from Kaiweets it does look like you can get away with using a probe in the deployed position so that you can you can just have two hands when you're working on a problem. Let's get this zip tie off. Yeah, thin little probes. And the probes, the probes themselves are small also compared to what I'm used to. And so inside the box, there's a pair of AAA batteries and a little bag to carry it all in. The other one didn't come with a bag, so I guess that's a nice touch. One of my complaints about this one is there's really no good way to stow this in your pocket because you're stabbing yourself with the red probe when you do so. So I'm hoping that this one, with the probes stowed on the back, will be a little more pocket-friendly for when you're climbing around trying to diagnose something at home. So let me get this open. There's one screw there and I'll install the batteries and we'll see how it goes. And the screw is not captive, the screw does fall out so you can lose it, but uh, they do have a metal insert there so that it can survive being screwed and unscrewed a bunch of times, so that's kind of a nice touch in a low-end meter. And it just has, it looks like, four modes that you can go between non-contact voltage, which is a nice feature that was missing on this one. So I was a little disappointed with the ST120 because these meters, both of these meters seem like they're trying to be a handy person's multimeter for climbing around the house. Live wire detection, phase, which I don't know why they would include in a low-end, low-cost meter. I don't think anyone's going around three-phase power with those. I would have much rather had capacitance um, because sometimes if you're trying to diagnose uh, a heat pump or some sort of motorized thing, a uh, failed capacitor is a common failure point. And it doesn't look like this one can do capacitance, and it also doesn't look like you can specify, you know, manually go into voltage or resistance separately. So if you're trying to measure test for continuity to get it to beep, you have to wait for it to figure out you're taking a, a continuity or ohms measurement. Well, that's quite slow. There we go. I will say it's very small. It's certainly pocket friendly. I like how they finally put a place to stow the probes, but I'm really disappointed that they got rid of the capacitance measurement that this thing could do. This thing starts off in auto mode, but I can push function to go into manual voltage DC, voltage AC, ohms, continuity with the beep, diode test, which is another one that the, the new KM201 doesn't do, uh, frequency, and there's the capacitance that I really wish they would have kept because if you just had capacitance on this thing, then you really would have a pretty handy 
little meter for basic handy person type work, doing electrical work around the house, troubleshooting things like heat pumps or whatever equipment you've got going on. You can't go wrong with just, you know, voltage and ohms. Um, and non-contact voltage is a really nice feature that, as I said, was lacking in the other ones. So you could certainly argue that that's more important than capacitance. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know, one step forward, one step back, I guess. Let's see how it does on a battery that I've got lying around here. And I'll use a fluke multimeter here for reference. So that battery is presently 1.06. Once that battery is dead. Okay, this battery measures 1.273 volts on my fluke. And of course these little covers come off so that you can have more length there. One point two eight thinking, thinking. Yeah, one point two eight. Okay, so a touch high, it's really having a hard time with that. All right, just to eliminate some of the vagaries, I've got a power supply here putting out three point three volts. And we'll test this on the fluke real quick to see how accurate that is. Yeah, 3.32, 3.319. All right, let's see what Kyleet says. Three point three four. I'm sure that's within spec if we pulled up the little table. All right, and I've got mains power in here, so let's stick my probes in here and see. Oh, it lights up red to tell me danger. One hundred twenty-four volts AC. And that's about right. My power is usually a little over 120 volts. Let's see what the fluke says. 123.2. Again, I'm sure if we pulled up the table, that would be within spec for this particular meter. So, you know, it's a tiny little pocket meter that could serve you pretty well. I mean, let's, let's test out the non-contact voltage. Okay, so I guess that's got an L for low, an H for high, depending on how strong it detects that. You know, you could do a lot worse for something tiny that fits into your pocket. This isn't much bigger than a lot of just the non-contact voltage detector pens. So I have to give it to them for having made such a tiny portable little unit where you can finally stow away the probes and not stab yourself if you put it in your pocket. I just really wish 
they would have kept capacitance as compared to that older model. I did a blog not that long ago where I looked at a bunch of different multimeters and all the wide variety of different things that they have for different purposes. So I'll link that down below if you're sort of interested in getting a feel for the landscape. Um, but I think that's it for now. Um, but let's do a quick little peek inside. And those were just self-tapping screws into plastic. There's not a metal insert because you're not supposed to be peeking inside here. So let's have a look. That's not a very big... I'm a little surprised at how much empty space they have in here. They could have made this product even smaller if they wanted to. So they've got some sort of chip under a blob. And that's the buzzer, of course, the battery contacts. Um, I was hoping to see some more obvious input protection, like a, a PTC and a MOV. Um, you don't normally get both in these low-end meters, although I think I think the other one had at least one of the two. I'll have to I'll have to see if I can dig up those teardown photos. I never I never published those in a video. But yeah, so that's that's all there is to it. And I guess if you were sufficiently determined, you could pull out these hardwired probes and wire in some new ones. They're just soldered onto those two points. I don't like the way that it looks like these wires are really getting pressed down into here by the indentation on the inside of the battery cover. That doesn't seem like it's great for the wires. Was it? It looks like they were meant to go through a right angle here and they didn't. So I'm not crazy about that. Um, so overall, I think I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed. I was excited about them finally making something with some probe holders on the back to go in your pocket. And you know, it for 20 bucks, it's, it's not a bad little tool, um, but it does seem like it was sort of one step forward, one step backwards. I'm a little disappointed at what I saw when I opened it up. I, I prefer to see beefier input protection for something that I'm gonna go sticking into mains utility power. Um, but like I said, 20 bucks. So leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I don't normally do product reviews on this channel, but I thought it was a fun little opportunity to open up a Kai Wheats, which is sort of making a name for itself at the low end market. I think I'm a little disappointed with this specific model, but I'll still be interested to see what Kai Wheats comes up with in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks.